Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. You are watching series Getting Easy with Apache Airflow. This is the second part of the video, monitoring your Airflow environment over Grafana dashboards and Prometheus. If you haven't watched the first part, I would highly recommend you to do that because this is the continuation of that part. In the first part, we looked at how we exposed stats T matrices from Airflow and made them available to Prometheus via stats T exporter. In this video, we will continue working on scrapping all of those matrices from Prometheus and making them available in Grafana and building dashboards. And also we'll be looking at how you can write your custom matrices on top of the existing Airflow matrices. So let's get started. So at this point, our Prometheus matrices are available. Now we can spin up our Prometheus instance and scrap all of these matrices from this given address. So in our Docker Compose file, we are going to run Prometheus service. And similar to StatC exporter, Prometheus also need configs. In this configs, we are going to tell Prometheus from where you need to scrap the matrices. So let us create a new file here called Prometheus YAML file in which we'll have global parameters as scrap interval and evaluation interval. Now here under scrap configs, we can add list of sources from where Prometheus needs to scrap the matrices from. Since we only have one, so we will say job name as Airflow, scheme is HTTP, matrix path is matrix is by default. So if you remove it, uh, it will be same. But yeah, we'll keep this for visibility. And in the static configs, we are going to mention what is the address of the target. So we'll mention the local address of our Docker engine, which is host Docker internal on port number 9102. So you can also give extra labels to all of those matrices coming from this route. In our case, we'll be giving Airflow ID as Airflow. This label is useful when we will be building our Grafana dashboards and I will tell you why when we will be coming to that section very shortly. Now we are pretty much done with Prometheus. So let us now start the Prometheus service in new terminal. Oops, we have mentioned a volume, but we haven't provided this in our Docker Compose file. We need to provide it over here. Seems like our Prometheus service is running. Let us go to the browser and have a look. Voila, we have our Prometheus server. Now, in order to see which sources are configured and from where it is uh, scrapping all of those matrices, you can go to source status and targets. And here you can see we have one source named Airflow uh, with following address, those status up. We have some following labels. So this is the one that we gave. So yeah, looks like everything is running. So if you go to the graphs and you search for any matrix name, which is mentioned over here, well, not all of them will be visible unless they have a value in it. They have ATG scheduler heartbeat. Um, there you go. We have scheduler heartbeat. If we reduce the time and see it is incrementing on a fixed interval. And another interesting one is the task instance finish states. So if you look at this one, so yeah, it looks like we have uh, around two, four tasks finished at this time, and then we have five tasks finished at this time. Let us uh, look at our airflow and see what's happening there actually. So we have my DAG. Uh huh. Yes, so we can see that we have task names which should also be mentioned in the label here. So we have task ID as uh, my task and the task ID is my task two. We should have DAG ID as well. And that's what we are providing it here in the labels. And the state is referring to whether it's succeeded or failed. So far, we have all of these tasks as succeeded. Now it's time to spin up a Grafana instance and build a nice dashboard based on this provided Grafana JSONs. Now in a Docker Compose file, we will gonna define a Grafana instance here. And yes, before I forget, it uses a volume Grafana data. So we'll mention this over here. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't need any configs. So we have admin and Grafana as username and password respectively. Now let us spin up a Grafana in a separate terminal and it's visible now on port number 3000. Nice. So let us log in as admin and yeah, I've already stored in here. Cool. So this is where you are going to light in. 
and we will gonna be configuring the data source and the dashboards from the ui so if you go to add data source uh, prometheus name this as airflow so the url in this case will be two and the access will be the browser access and you can test this it's all working fine save and test back cool so we have airflow data source configured as prometheus listening on localhost 9092 now let us build our dashboard home new dashboard now here you can go to dashboard settings name this as airflow cluster or whatever you want to call it then you need to first save this dashboard save now I go to settings again now in json model so here we will be pasting the json provided in this following repository we go to cluster dashboards json so be careful while you paste this in our grafana instance because uh, you need to make sure that the uid is same and also this id is same the trick that i use to copy paste this is so you copy everything till here till time zone uh, we will re we will leave the rest of them exactly as it is so uid and version and of course we have our own title all right and one more thing which is so you need to keep the id as null grafana will gonna auto generate the id for this dashboard so save changings yeah i think it's done so if you go back to there you go we have nice visualizing grafana dashboard running in our grafana instance now one thing to notice here is that this uh, grafana dashboard uses a variable called airflow instance id you can have multiple instance IDs. Let's say you have Airflow production running and Airflow development running and a bunch of other Airflow instances running. So you can select from here which instance you wanna view the matrices for. You can also visualize this from settings and variables. And this is the ID. There are a bunch of methods by which you can uh, get the values of uh, the given variable. Uh, in this case, they are taking this from the query. But in our case, since we don't have any methods where we are uh, populating any kind of airflow instances so you can uh, set this as uh, constants or customs let's say we have airflow which we will treat this as airflow production and then maybe you will have airflow dev and some bunch of other instances of airflows that you're running so you can say update now if you click this airflow dev you will see there is no data coming in now the way how it works is uh, let me show you if you click on any of those matrices here and you click edit we are filtering on various variables on our prometheus matrices so in this case we have airflow id as the name of the variable itself so this label we are generating from prometheus configs remember when we mentioned here in our static configs we are saying label as airflow id airflow so here you can have like bunch of other scrapping sources and you can mention them as a flow dev and this can be a flow dev so once you have this much spinned up so all of those dev instance a flow will be appended with this following label a flow id as a flow dev from there when you switch to a flow dev you will see the matrices of development a flow instance so now with that said we are going to move on to the last section of our video in which we will be sending some of our custom matrices to Grafana dashboard. In order to do that, let us go back to our DAG code. This is how our DAG code looks like, pretty much simple stuff. We have two tasks using Python operator. So this task takes an argument as runtime and it's running a for loop for that given time. In order to expose our custom stats T matrices, we first uh, let's get the stats T information from Airflow conflicts by accessing the global airflow configurations create the constant variables as stats t host port and prefix and then we are going to use stats t client to send the matrices so this client is already baked in the image that we are using uh, airflow uh, 2.1.3 
so you don't have to install it while running in the docker container but if you want to install this in your local machine you can always head over to this uh, github page so this is the one that airflow is using by statsd you can install it with pip install statsd and again yes don't install this library without hitting star to this repository because these guys deserve it so first off we will gonna create the client by providing the host port and the prefix and now the important thing is the mattress name so as an example we create a custom mattress as a, my counter which is going to tell like how many times this for loop ran in a given task but in this mattress we also want to include information like tag id and the task id so we are going to construct a mattress uh, in a similar fashion as of how it's built in the predefined airflows okay, so let's build something similar to this so we say tag which is an hard-coded one and here we are going to mention tag id then we mention task id then we call our mattress as my counter now in order to pass these tag id and task ids you can get this from the task instance uh, as an example we are seeing provide context is true we will mention this in both of our task instances so this context includes uh, quite useful information about the task itself like its execution time its, its running time uh, the tag name task name and etc uh, we will not be including the prefix here because that's already done in this uh, library itself under the hood when we mention the prefix here since this is a counter so in each of the iteration of for loop you can increment this by one and you mention the name of the matrix now in order to allow this to be visible in prometheus we have to add another entry in our config maps over here which will be similar to what's exactly been done on others so we have tag which is hard coded then tag id then task id and then dot my counter so the first one is airflow id second is tag id then third should be task id and my counter yeah that's it so you need to make sure it's a counter not an observer then we name it anything you like all oh, right yeah that looks pretty much it so now let us try and test this now you need to restart your scheduler your web server as well as your stats exporter okay looks like everything is up and running again now let us go back to our prometheus in fact before there let us check in our stats exporter whether we have this uh, new matrix defined which should be with the name my custom task counter it's not there because uh, i think none of our task has ran since then let us run one of our dag manually and on each task run we should throw the custom stats team matrices nice so we have our custom matrices available for prometheus to scrap we have labels as airflow id tag id task id i think it ran like twice so it has 10 and this has follow up of two nice so um, we should be able to see this over here as well if you refresh this my custom task counter execute awesome we can also create a separate panel for this in our let's duplicate this one duplicate and we go to edit right as you can see we have pretty much ugly uh, visibility here so we should be able to set a different visualization for this yeah over here uh, we can call this as um, graph okay so these labels are not at all helpful so we can call them more descriptively as a counter tag as tag id so here we can mention the label name and task as 
task ID. Uh, we should be able to change the title as custom counter. You save this and you can change the visualization to five minutes or 15 minutes or whatever makes you feel easy. So with that, we are like pretty much done with this video. So we saw how we can export Airflow matrices from Statsd all the way through Grafana. And we also showed you how you can write your custom matrices in Airflow and make them visible in Grafana. So that is all for this video. And I hope this was informative for you guys. And uh, the next steps from here onwards would be to apply and implement the alerts and notifications which we are going to be covering in our next video. If you liked it, please don't forget to give thumbs up, share your thoughts on this. And if you have any suggestions or improvements, do mention them in the comments below. Last but not least, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe us. This is going to keep us motivated to bring this kind of useful stuff to you guys in the future. So till next time, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.